Well, in a typical Angular app, directives kind of encapsulate most of the DOM manipulations, right? And I mean, DOM manipulations is usually the source of troubles, especially when it comes to all the inconsistencies in between browsers. So I think that's kind of another reason why we really should test these things. But unfortunately, very often people think like, ah, oh, you know, it, it touches DOM, so it's kind of difficult to test, so I'm not going to touch it. And so now I would like to do a quick demo to show you how you can actually test directives and give you some ideas how to do that. So I decided to take uh, the example from Angular homepage, which is this uh, simple directive. Uh, it's a Twitter bootstrap tabs component. So it works like this. It's copy pasted from Angular homepage, so I guess you know it. This is a source code that's index.html. So you can see we are using tabs, right? And that's the directive. That's the Angular directive. So the, that, that allows us to use tabs and panes, OK? And the source code of this directive is actually right over there, here. You know, it's very similar to stuff that Mishko just talked about. OK. and the so the question is, how can we test such a directive, right? Um, well, I have, let me make this. I wrote a couple of unit tests that I'm going to show you, and I will try to explain how can you do that. So first thing I'm doing uh, in, this, in this unit test is I'm asking for a compile which is this guy, dollar compiler, which is Angular compiler, right? You already saw that. And what you can do, you can actually create a dome. You can, like, that's what I'm doing here. Yes? Where does the compiler come from? Compiler? You, you just get it. You get it from dependency injection. Well, can you show me? You can't see it. Maybe you're... Ah, oh, you, you have a slightly or... different screen than I'm sorry. Good point. Um, let me, how about this? There you go. So uh, I might say this is Jasmine. The, the, the syntax of this unit test is a Jasmine. And for those who are not familiar with that, we Angular gives you some helper function to actually use dependency injection during unit testing as well, right? So that's why you can use this inject method to actually get stuff injected in the same way as in your app. So here we are just saying, hey, I, I want to compile. An injector will give you Angular's compiler. OK? And then we create, we create an element, like dome element, basically, which is it's one diff. And there's this tabs. And there are two panes inside. There is one pane with the title first tab and another pane with title second tab. And then what we do, we actually do sort of manual bootstrap. It's very similar to manual bootstrapping the app, because we we take this element and we pass it to compiler and say, hey, compile this compile this element. And that means so this line number 25, that's kind of important piece, because that's where the compiler actually traverses this chunk of dome and it applies all the directives and basically transform the dome. Right, So that's how we kind of apply this directive, this component. And then we can just assert whether uh, the result is what we expected. Right? So here, I'm, for instance, I'm testing whether it creates the titles, whether it creates the clickable titles. Like if we look into this example, there are two tabs, these tabs that you can click. So in this unit test, we are testing whether it creates these things, right? Because the, the input is just tabs, and there are two panes, and it needs to uh, create like different structure, the structure with uh, divs and uh, unordered lists. So we are double checking that this uh, happens. <clears throat> then, I'm testing whether the binding the whether the binding inside the tab works, right? So again, 
we do the same thing and then we assert what is the content of the tab and we assert whether the content is what you expect. So if I go up, you can see the content of the first pane is first content is and binding to first variable. And then inside this test, what I'm doing, I'm just setting this variable to value one, two, three, and then I'm asserting that the content of the tab is properly bound, right? There's a bunch of other unit tests, like testing whether the active CSS class is properly applied and stuff. I think the most interesting test is the last one, and that kind of pretends clicking a link, right? And you can even you can do that easily, like with just jQuery, right? So what I'm doing here, again, first we apply this directive, and then I'm doing, hey, find the second link and trigger click, right? So basically this test, what this test does, it just finds this second link and it triggers click. And then we assert whether, whether the second title has the class active, right? That's right here. And we assert that the second content has class active because that's what makes uh, these tabs either visible or hidden, right? And these are pretty much like unit tests that covers the basic functionality of this component. Let me, so let me, let me show you how you can run these things. So we use something uh, we call testacular. Just, I don't know, are you guys familiar with this thing, with testacular? Um, it's a it's a test runner that we did to make our life a little bit easier, and what it does it it's it bootstrap um, well it keeps watching your file system the the files of your project and whenever you change any of those files it execute these unit tests in a real browser. So let me show how this works. So I'm gonna start the Stacular and kind of small screen, but you can see that it captured uh, Chrome in the background, and now it's going to, whenever I change any of those files, it will execute uh, these, these tests in, in this Chrome. You can use any other browser if you like. And it keeps watching these files, so you can see if I change something in this file and I press save, it immediately executes these unit tests, and you can immediately see the results in your console, or you can do that even in IDE, like if you're using WebStorm or something. Sorry, how did it know capture this file? Was it was it a command line argument? No, there is a uh, there is like configuration file for this project. Uh -huh. Sorry, the the question uh, you want me to repeat the question. The question was uh, how did it kn how does this thing know uh, which file to watch? And the answer is that there is a configuration file per project where you specify a list of files that you want to watch. I can show you this config file if you want. The interesting part is here where we say, hey, watch all the JavaScript files in JS folder, basically. And all right, so this is how you run these tests and you can see that they are still even though you do some uh, little bit of dom manipulation it's still pretty fast um let me let me show you that it's it's really what i'm saying let's fail some of these how tests. do you figure they're fast say again you said they're fast how fast are they i mean in when it comes to these five unit tests it's kind of useless numbers but it's now it's 200 milliseconds it used to be faster. Now it's 100. It, it depends on the network as well, but it's about 100 or 200 milliseconds, these five unit tests. And I think, and here's one, one tip that I have for you, and that whenever you are doing this, whenever you're testing directives, and basically whenever you're testing DOM, uh, if it's possible, don't attach, uh, don't attach this DOM to the document. You can see here, we create 
this Angular element, is, that's just a wrapper around jQuery, right? So it basically creates a dome from this string. And you can see we are passing this to compiler and doing these, like applying all these directives, but we don't attach this, uh, this dome into a document, right? And that means that the browser doesn't have to render it. So it's way faster, right? So unless you really need it, don't attach this stuff to the document. That will help you look. I mean, sometimes there is no way around. Sometimes you need it to attach to the DOM. For instance, if you if the directive needs, uh, like for instance, know the size of the diff, you know, to get this computer sizes, you need to attach it to a document to render it so that you actually know how big it is. But unless you really need it, don't do it. Um, yeah, so let, let me let me try to fail some of these tests. So for instance, let's check. This is the template of this tabs. So, and here we are saying that is active class. So let's, for instance, change this. And when, when I save it, you can see that it immediately execute this test and they fail because there is a test that tests uh, whether the active CSS class is applied properly and it complains that this element should have CSS class active, but it does not now, right? Because I broke the component. Like if I go now to the page and refresh, you can see it doesn't work. Well, it does. But <laughs> Yeah, but oh uh, yeah, because I remove it only from the titles. So the titles are you can see the titles looks both the same. There is none of them is active, so it's actually broken. Cool. <clears throat> All right, let me show you one more trick that can make your unit tests and tests of these dome stuff and directives a little bit faster. I think it's always good to cover either functionality or bugs with as low as possible test. You know, so these case that I just show you, they are not really unit tests. Like they are a little bit higher level tests, right? We are doing DOM manipulation. There is multiple there are multiple components involved in these tests. So what you can do if you look into these tabs uh, directive, it has its own controller for instance. And Mishka didn't talk about controllers, but controller is very similar to linking function. So for now, we can say it's a linking function. There is, it's almost, almost the same. So this controller contains a little bit of logic for this, for this particular component, right? There is like select method and add pane. And it turns out that you could possibly test this controller even without DOM. Right, because even inside this component, this tabs component, you have this sort of separation between logic and view. So you could extract this controller. Let me do that. We can take out this this function and say tabs controller and just define it as a function here. Something like this. And now what I can do, I can test this controller separately without the DOM, right? And that again makes it faster. So in this case, I think we covered pretty much all the behavior and all the functionality of this controller in the previous unit test already, where we test the component as a, as a whole. But if I have this sort of like framework, like extracting this, uh, let me say it different. If I, if I have this like controller extracted outside from the directive and I have set up unit test for this controller, um, it's really easy to add more, more tests for that. So for instance, if I, if I found the bug in this controller later on, it is super easy for me to add a new test that covers just this bug without actually test, without doing all the stuff at DOM. You know, I, I don't feel I'm explaining this 
well. But um, the point is that if it's possible, and with directives, it could be possible for controllers or linking functions. You might extract these linking functions on, or controllers out of the directive so that you can test them separately without DOM. And that, again, can make it faster. All right. Any questions? No? Last thing I want to show you. Uh, if you look into this controller, uh, sorry, into this component, uh, there is this template that is kind of inlined in JavaScript. And it looks kind of nasty. It's, it's like a string in a JavaScript. We don't like that. So I think it's way better to use external template, like to have the template extracted to a separate file. And we can do that, like with Angular, the directive can has, you can use, instead of template, you can use template URL like this, and then it will fetch the, the template uh, from an external file. So I can do that, and I can do that for this other guy as well. And you can see that it still works the same. The only difference is that now we are loading, is it visible? We are loading these two templates as a separate files, right? That's good because you get all this stuff like, you know, in IDE, you have syntax highlighting for HTML, and it's way nicer and easier to read and refactor. But the trouble is that when it comes to this test, the trouble is how do you get this template to testing? Because we are loading just JavaScript files, and we just execute them. And so you would have to, I mean, if I execute these tests, this is super small. Maybe I can. You would basically need another web server to serve these templates just for unit testing, right? And that's something you don't want to deal with. Like, it's just unit testing. You want it to be fast. So we have this new feature for Testacular that it can actually, it can watch HTML files as well. And whenever you change any of those files, it converts those files on the fly into JavaScript files that eventually puts this content into template cache. It's kind of like a little bit freak. But I think I will show you the, con the generated content that should explain. Um, Okay, so what is this? Exactly. No, this should be already. Yeah, but now I'm not using the. But I don't think I changed the HTML file. Oops. Yeah, this is correct. All right, I know. I need to load this module. All right, it's, I'm sorry, it's so small. It's anyway. So the tests are now passing, and let me show you what's actually being loaded. This is this is the browser that we are executing these tests in background. You know, that's the captured browser that Testacular actually sends to like whenever you change the file it says hey testacular these are the new files execute them and test, test them and let me show you the network panel here now if i execute the test again you can see that it loads these suspicious files it loads tabs.html.js and that's the generated file. So whenever, so it on the fly, it creates this generated JavaScript file. And maybe I can make it bigger. And you can see that this JavaScript file is just 
it just creates Angular module and it puts it puts the string, which is the template from the HTML file, it puts it into into the template cache. So that then when the directive actually asks for uh, for the template, it doesn't fetch it from server, but it takes it from local cache. So that enables you to test uh, directives with external files, with external templates, without any overhead, because it it keeps watching the HTML files in the same way as JavaScript files. So if I open this is the external template, right? That, that's the template for tabs. And if I if I save this file, if I change this file and I save it, the stack user will notice that as well and it will re-execute execute all the tests again, like this. And still like 200 milliseconds or something. Um, all right. <laughs> I don't think this was, this was good explanation. But I mean, I don't know. Do you have any questions? This this whole thing is uh, I will put it on GitHub, so you can actually you know once your brain is fresh, you can you can see it again and maybe I hope it 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 might uh, give you some ideas how to test directives because I really believe that it we should test them and it's not that difficult once we figure out how. Sorry, question? So is the testacular documentation linked from Angular's website? Where, where do you find it? Testacular documentation? No, okay. Okay. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's definitely a t-shirt question. No, there, there is a readme. And there, there is actually a screencast. I did, I did a screencast how to, yeah. Ah. So Testacular is a project that is separate from Angular. Um, we use it for all of the testing, but you can actually use it even without Angular. So if you're building an application that needs to run tests in, in the browser, then you can use Testacular for that if you're using just jQuery or some other framework. Yeah. I noticed you have this uh, Angular JS tab in Web Inspector. Actually, Mishka mm -hmm. had it, you also. So uh, where can I get one of those? Uh, that's a good question. That's uh, that's an extension that Brian Ford did, our intern, and it's called Batarang. A B A T A R A N G. Was it correct? <laughs> yeah, it's it's in the Chrome store, so you can download them from there. Yep. Do you need Canary or? No. You, you awesome. Just, it already works in stable Chrome. Yeah, it works in stable Chrome. Awesome. Yep. Any other questions? One more? Version of Testacular, which version of Testacular? Oh yeah, that's a good question. I didn't mention that. Um, yeah, this feature was implemented this afternoon <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the purpose of this talk. So it's not, uh, but you can have it if you install it through, uh, if you use a Canary uh, like channel. So if you do npm install Testacular at Canary, We'll post uh, it to the meetup group. So meet up, on meetup.com, there's going to be a comment about this. And there are going to be instructions. One more question? Going to, to, to like intern tests, I've seen the test. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to do end to end testing with Testacular? Yes, there is. I think the best example is Angular Seed or Angular Tutorial. Is that correct? Yeah. Is it the uh, The tutorial. Stern currently still uses just as driver, mm -hmm. but it's the same thing. So, but the Angular seat yeah. is a bit. Yeah. Okay, so Angular seat, it's a repo on our GitHub. I'll post a note to the meetup yes. page. And that's kind of all configured and set up how to use Angular Scenario Runner with Testacular. Is there any ability to profile Is there a way to profile directives and figure out what is slow in my application? 
<clears throat> okay. Uh, Rang. We don't have anything specific for directives. I mean, well, it, how can be directive like directive on its own? I don't think directive can be. I think Badarang is the, the this extension is probably the best Badarang thing the for best debugging. Way. It's going to show you which parts of the application are slow. Yes. Um, and typically the slowness of the application comes from things that Badarang are currently displays. So. It's usually about binding, and Badarang will show you all the bindings, and so most of the time the directive will have a couple of bindings, and these bindings might be slow. One last question. Uh, is there one? Okay, one more. Is the template cache code on GitHub? Template cache. Template cache is part of Angular. Um, yes. It's a, it's a service that you can interact with. If you look at the documentation, um, you, you'll find it. And uh, just a testacular, and this plugin for testacular uses just this template cache to populate the cache uh, for the tests. Yeah. Can you use it as an uh, optimization? To, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So many of the big applications actually <coughs> use the external templates, and during the deploy process or during the build process, uh, they will just concatenate all the templates from these external files <coughs> into a single JavaScript file that populates the cache, and then this single JavaScript file is loaded when the application is deployed in production. Or you can inline stuff into a script tag, and that eventually will be done through template cache as well. Because if you inline template in a script tag, then Angular will read it and put it into template script cache. Script tag with the type uh, text uh, slash ng template. 